major are as concerned as their parents with the public's conception of today's youth. These students are portraying what we consider bad taste in school attire and behavior. This student is wearing an extremely tight skirt. Improper dress was an innocent way to defy adult restrictions. But a growing number of young people were turning against society's rules in more significant ways. No split levels, no Cadillacs, no commuter's bridge, an appalling weight. Like, I mean, what are they doing with their lives? Some were inspired by the Beatniks, a small but conspicuous group of young adults in the big cities who dabbled in marijuana, wrote poetry, and won scores of imitators in high schools all over the country. Cellophane wrapped in the black nightmare of the endless factory. My soul squeezed in the hydraulic press of eternal drip, drip, drip. We started, uh, a bunch of us, putting out a poetry magazine, and suddenly it was banned because uh, of one little poem. And so we had our first publication suppressed. And I, the poem I still remember to this day was, I'd like to kiss just left of center of the valley of her breasts, and then I'd try the other side or something. <laughs> Anyhow, so they banned the magazine and we went outrageous. The banning of, quote, unacceptable ideas provoked certain politically aware students to begin questioning the values, the motives, and the judgment of school officials and others in authority. And then one day, the principal came into the class and had us all pass up our copies of Catcher in the Rye and told us to forget that we'd ever seen this book. We learned fairly quickly that the book had been banned by the school board. This turned out to be a real learning experience <laughs> for all of us, because uh, far we learned a lot more than we would have learned if we'd just been allowed to read the book, because this way, of course, not only did we read the book, but everybody in the school suddenly wanted to read the book. Books could be censored, but now something came along that was much harder to stop something that millions of young people would seize and use as a means to further separate themselves from adult society. Lying on the beam, set on flight control, radio tune to rock and roll. The arrival of rock and roll in my life was like something that came from another planet. We hadn't heard anything like that sound before. We hadn't heard people making that kind of noise, um, breaking all limits of politeness. Well, long tall Sally, she's a beautiful species guy. Everything that Uncle John need, oh, baby. Yeah, baby. And what was so strange is how so many people responded to someone very weird, like Little Richard, instantly, with no sense of distance, no sense of of questioning, just, of course, yes, I've been waiting all my life for this, and I never knew it. My father had a sort of breakthrough once, as I recall, where he realized man, they had their fads too. When he was a young man, maybe older than 13, but when, oh, everything's upside down. When the music goes round and round, ooh, and it comes out here. Well, I heard this and he said, this was a wild song that we had when I was a kid. And I said, yeah, that, that's wild, <laughs> you know. That was the first integrated setting I was ever in. But many, many parents and many children 
were scared of the words, the style, and the racial implications of black music. You ain't left one. Elvis Presley comes and gives us rock and roll that's white. The irony is, is the adults who thought of rock and roll as an act of rebellion, while the kids said it's not, it's just music, uh, those adults were right. They ain't mad, are they? No, that's the way kids are dancing nowadays. They call it rock and rolling or pop or something like that. It was a rebellion uh, against suburbia. It was a rebellion for me against, uh, against all of the conventions that seemed to make life so stifling. And uh, rock and roll, along with, along with the beatnik movement, along with Kerouac and Ginsburg and things like that, it, it really uh, it, it helped to punch a hole in, 60, in the 50s conformity. Well, I'm sitting here, what a world. based upon the experiences throughout the country that this rock and roll rhythm has been the seed of trouble and we want to keep trouble out of Jersey City, Don. Rock and roll has got to go, and go it does. That's the best way I know to get rid of them. The older generation was accusing rock and roll of encouraging everything from poor study habits to juvenile delinquency from drug taking to sexual immorality. Balls of fire. Just the same. Point 25 of the communist goal, corrupt American young people, how? Through movies and music. That two-beat pattern is the music brought to the United States of America by the communist conspiracy to corrupt teenagers, and it's in every rock and roll number. Communism, I mean, I mean, the idea that rock and roll has anything to do with communism, rock and roll is sort of the ultimate flower of, of capitalism in a lot of ways. Um, it's inconceivable that a music that's based so deeply in, in hustling, in let's get rich, in one-hit wonders, um, you know, could have anything to do with a planned economy. I mean, the concepts are, you know, monumentally different.